Ain't nobody mad but the devil today. I don't know who's messing with my music, but my name is Victory. I need to hear my music this morning. The devil is messing with my music. My name is Victory. My name is Victory. Please make sure, try to see if we can get that music right, guys. My name is Victory. I know who I am. Praise God, praise God. My name is Victory. Your name is Victory. Why? Because we have the victory in Christ. Are you a breakthrough believer that still believes? If you believe in the power of God, I want you to type in the comment box, I believe. I believe in the power of God. Listen, guys, with everything going on out here in this world, it's just crazy. I have to have something or someone I believe in more than this world system. It's wicked out here. It is simply crazy out here, guys. I want to talk to you guys, you know, about some things today that's really been bothering me. It's been on my mind. It's really been in my heart, guys. Uh, today is a good Friday. It is God Friday. And uh, we're going to praise God. We're going to give God, as the old saints used to say, excuse me, guys, we're going to give God an anyhow praise. We're going to praise God Anyhow, in spite of what we're going through, in spite of what's going on around us, God is still good. Come on. Somebody type that in their comment box. God is still good. Yes, God is still seated on the throne. God has all power, guys, and God is still good. So we thank God uh, for his presence. We thank God uh, for his mercy and for his grace on this good Friday, this God Friday, we call every Friday, Monday through Friday, really, good Monday, good Tuesday, uh, good Wednesday, good Thursday, good Friday, good Saturday, uh, good Sunday, when we say good morning, we're decreeing and declaring that today is going to be a God morning for you. Today is going to be a God day. Now, listen, guys, I need you to do me a favor. Make sure that you're hitting the share button. Share it. Share the love with somebody else. Reach out and touch somebody else. Reach out and hug somebody else. Let somebody else know um, that we are on live. I shared with you guys on the other day, uh, for some reason, uh, through Facebook Live, all of uh, my people who would normally get the notifications, they're not receiving notifications. But that's how the devil works. And so it's, it's, it's great. I'm excited um, that this uh, harvest month, which is October, um, that we are teaching, Pastor Robin and I are teaching a powerful series, and Pastor Tiff helped us out this week and did a phenomenal job, did a great job on victory in sacrificial giving. And so uh, and that's going to be for the whole month of October, uh, but each week is going to be broken up. And so this week that we've been in right here, we've been teaching you how 
uh, without without uh, sacrifice, there's no victory. And also there's no sacrifice without discipline. So today I want you to type that in your box. We're going to be talking about this, guys. We're going to be going through it. We're going to be going over it, and it's going to be very powerful. Victory takes discipline. And so today is our last day. Make sure, guys, um, that you get the notes. Uh, please hit the share button. Uh, me of you all haven't shared yet. That's the little blue box right in your left-hand corner. Do that for me this morning. Begin to share while you, while you are typing in victory takes discipline. Now, there is an outcome. There's an outcome to sacrificial giving. When we give to the Lord, we also receive of the Lord. When we sacrifice unto the Lord, we also receive a greater measure of blessings. Why? Our harvest is contingent, guys. Our victory, if you will, is contingent on our honor for God, our honor for the things of God, and our honor for the, for the promises of God. And so that's why I was sharing with you a moment ago, guys, the importance of us keeping God first. So continue to type that in. Victory takes discipline. If you're not typing it in, make sure you're writing in your notes. Make sure you're decreeing this, guys, declaring it in your home, your car, your place of business, your job, wherever you are. Even if you have to just mumble it, because Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing. And guys, we need to hear the word of God. We need to activate the word of God. We need to believe the word of God. And we need to walk it out. The Bible tells us to work out our faith and, so, and, and, our, and also our salvation, which means there are some things that we simply must do. And so maybe you were never taught how to align your life with heaven so that the promises of God, which are yea and amen, which is yes and amen. It means, in other words, God says, I am not man um, that I shall lie. Heaven and earth will both pass away before my word not come to pass. And guys, let me share something with you. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited because we live in this diabolical world. We live in this crazy world. And man, there is so much uh, evil going on, guys. I was telling you earlier, um, there's some things that just, I mean, simply disturb me um, on uh, last week and on this week. And I mean, when I say it disturbed me, guys, I mean, it really disturbed me to where I really just couldn't get um, any rest. Um, and, you know, when I thought about, you know, when I watched the uh, campaign debate on uh, last uh, week with the uh, president of the United States, um, Donald Trump, and then the vice president, uh, Joe Biden. I mean, man, it was just awful uh, to think um, that if we relied on uh, men to run this earth and to run this country to make decisions uh, for millions and millions of people, I don't know about you, um, but it, I mean, it was crazy. It was a mess. It was a fighting, an arguing match. I mean, it was you know disrespectful. It was dishonorable. And I just think about what the scripture says, guys. He says, listen, when those that are unrighteous are in leadership position, the people run and hide. That means there's so much craziness going, in, going on in the streets, going on in the world, that, guys, it calls people uh, to not want to be out in public because they don't know what's going to happen. So the Bible says it causes them to run and hide. But then it says when the righteous... Uh, are in leadership, it causes the people to come out and to celebrate. I don't know about you guys. I'm ready to come out and celebrate. I'm ready to, to acknowledge, man, that God is my hero. Yes, God is my leader. God is my coach. God is the one that leads us, guides us, and directs us. So guys, as breakthrough believers, knowing who we are in Christ, we have to make sure that we align ourselves um, to see the fulfillment of God's blessing in the earth by simply remembering what Jesus taught us. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Thy will be done in my life. Got to make it personal as it is in heaven. Lord, use me today. Come on, somebody needs to decree and declare that. Lord, use me today. Use me for your glory. Woo! Lord, use me for your glory. 
I'm no singer, but I like to, I love to sing. I love to decree and declare the word of the Lord. And that's what I'm decreeing this morning in your hearing that we should all be declaring, Lord, use me this morning. Use me each and every day to bring you glory. And so guys, know who you are. Know your power in Christ. Know your power also in this earth realm, guys. Make sure um, that you get out and vote. But at the end of the day, guys, your, your trust has to be in God. It's God that's going to bring us through. It's God that's going to keep us with all of these injustices that's going on in the earth right now. I mean, all of the, the heinous crimes. I mean, they say uh, so many crimes on a, are on an on-time high. Uh, murder, people being killed, uh, people being falsely accused, falsely arrested. Uh, people are in the streets, guys, and they are marching against injustice. And then there are some people on the streets that are tearing up neighborhoods and tearing up communities uh, because they are disenfranchised with the way our government has done things, with the way our police officers have done things. And so people who don't have a voice are saying, can you hear me now? So when you see they shouldn't be, shouldn't do it that way. We shouldn't be uh, burning down cars or burning up grocery stores because at the end of the day, when, when these same people wake up, they burn down their own neighborhoods. And so then they don't have anything in their own neighborhoods. But I wanna share these things with you uh, because you know, I, you know, I was just meditating and thinking as I was watching the news on the other day and it just bothered me. It just troubled me uh, that the earth is travailing, that the, that the earth, that the world is so much is going on, uh, COVID-19, you know, um, the pandemic. So there's one thing after another, guys, um, that is happening in our time that I personally never thought that I would see in our lifetime. Now, am I surprised? Absolutely not. I'm not shocked uh, because the word of God tells us about these things that are going to take place and these things that were going to happen in the earth uh, because of disobedience, because of uh, men and women's choices and decisions not to put God first, it was going to cause a harvest to come from how people have been living in the world. And so guys, that's why I wanna to talk to you about victory takes discipline because as a breakthrough believer, we have to trust God. We have to uh, lean on God's word. And so the Bible lets us know that God wants us to walk by faith. And so in order to walk by faith, guys, and all faith means is to trust him. God wants us to trust him through everything. You know, I think about Jesus, how Jesus trusted God all the way until he died. He trusted him. He was carrying the cross, blood dripping from his body, and he trusted God. He got up on the cross, and he even forgave those that had did him wrong, those who had lied on him those that had crucified him, those that had sped up on him, talked about him, ripped flesh from his back, those that had put a, a crown of thistles on his head uh, to where his scalp was bleeding, his back was ripped open, and yet Jesus Christ said, Lord, for, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I don't know about you, but I know and realize that took discipline. He knew his assignment and he was willing to become a sacrifice for victory. I want you to catch this, guys. He was willing to become a sacrifice. There has to be a shedding of blood in order for there to be atonement. So we thank God that Jesus now is our sacrificial lamb, that he was willing to sacrifice his life that you and I could be victorious. What do you mean by that, Apostle? Well, the Bible says that Jesus, for those of us that believe in him, he came and he took the sin of the world away when he paid the penalty for sin in his flesh. That's why he had to be crucified and the Father had to turn from him. And that was the only time that the Father had ever turned from him because he had lived a holy life he had lived a righteous life. The Bible says that Jesus knew no sin, so he was a sacrificial lamb who had no blemish. I want you to catch this. He became the tithe 
for what God wanted. God wanted more sons and daughters. God wanted to gain us back because the first son, Jesus, we talked about it all this week, the first son, G, uh, Adam, he sinned in the garden. He was not disciplined in his sacrifice. He wasn't disciplined. God gave him everything. And he said, but this one tree that I've given to you called good and evil, Adam, don't you touch it. This is mine. This is sanctified. This is set apart for me. And you know the story. We talked about it, how Adam, through his wife, ended up partaking of, the, of God's portion. God, get this in your notes, guys. Type this in the comment box. God will always have a portion. Come on, make sure you give me some thumbs up. Give me some hearts. Come on, guys, give me some likes. God always has a portion. In any relationship, there is a portion in order for that relationship to be a whole that is only shared between those two parties. So if I go to buy a new home and I get a mortgage on that home, my contract is with that title company. I'm in a covenant relationship with that title company and there is a sacrifice that I owe them that is given to me in my check or how, however I get my, my means of income. It is a portion in that monthly that is not mine. It is automatically theirs. And so that gives us covenant so I can abide, I can live, I can stay in the home that I'm in because my covenant relationship, I hold up my end, okay? So that's my responsibility, if you will. I'm using this as an illustration for sacrificial giving or for our tithe because the tithe is not ours. The tithe is the Lord's and the tithe has existed since the beginning of time. All the tithe is, is that thing, that 10%, that God wanted from a whole. God wanted a piece of a whole from a whole. So in order to get a piece of a whole from a whole, in order to get a piece of 100%, God blessed us 100%, okay? In order to get a piece of 100%, there has to be 10% of that whole. There has to be a dime that comes out of that 100% that we give to God, that God has given to us when he gave us breath, when he woke us up this morning, when he put us in our right mind, when he keeps us in our right mind, when he gives us a job, a career, when he sustains us, whether through unemployment, whether through disability, whether it's through retirement, social security, whatever it is, we honor God in our discipline. That's why we have to be disciplined. A mature, it takes a mature person to be a tither and a giver because a true tither does it consistently. And in order to do anything consistently, you have to be disciplined. I thank God for the discipline of the Lord. I'm decreeing and declaring that across the airways now that you are getting in the posture for this new year. According to Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish calendar, we have already crossed over into the head of the year. Uh, the new year, Rosh Hashanah means head of the year, it means new beginning, new day. And the Jews marked their calendar all the way back to the book of Genesis when the first man was created, when God created the garden and uh, blessed the earth. So we follow that calendar. We also follow the Gregorian calendar where we will cross over in January. Um, that was written out by uh, Bishop, I mean, Pope Gregory uh, the 13th. So, uh, but we have crossed over according to the Jewish calendar, guys. And what do we want? We also came into Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, where we repented from our sins. What did Chronicles, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, 14 says, if my people, which are called by my name, will repent, humble themselves, turn from their wicked way of doing things, and return unto me, I will hear, heaven will hear, and I will heal your earthly. Come on, somebody received their healing, somebody received their deliverance, and somebody received their breakthrough, uh, because as we come into this new year, maybe you have not been consistent in your sacrificial giving. God, I give this uh, because you've given me everything. So God, I give you this 10%, and Father God, now my 90 is greater than when I had the 100, because now you get in my affairs. You know, according to Malachi, guys, uh, chapter 3, 
verse 6 through 10, it talks about how God says, listen, will a man rob me? How have you robbed me? In tithe and offering. You are cursed with a curse. God says, but when you return to me, when you come back to me, uh, many people think that means just coming to a church building. No, it doesn't. It's a lifestyle, guys. And again, even to live for Christ, Christianity is a lifestyle, which means it's a discipline. So you can't just do whatever you want to do, uh, go wherever you want to go, even though you can, because God gives us a free will. So God is impressed when we sacrifice our will for his will. And that's why Adam missed it when he came to the garden, because God, God was giving him his will. And the only way that he can give him something uh, to know to not to touch, to tie Adam uh, and the garden from earth to heaven and heaven to earth is there had to be a connection. Well, Adam messed that connection up when he received of that fruit uh, from his wife who listened to the devil who got into the serpent. And now the condition of mankind in the flesh, um, you see Adam got kicked out of the garden, so he missed the blessing. Well, in Malachi, when God was uh, teaching uh, about the importance of the tithe, he was saying, look here, um, guys, when you when you remember me, I'll remember you. And so again, the tithe and offering, giving to God has been since the beginning of time. And then Adam turns around after he missed it. God says, listen, Adam, you're going to be cursed with the curse. So he was kicked out of the garden and everything that was green, everything that was uh, prospering. Uh, Elder Keisha, could you put up that tree for me? And also uh, those uh, key points that I put up when Adam got kicked out of the garden. I want the people just to see how when Adam got kicked out, he lost everything. So he went from having everything, guys, to losing everything because he was not disciplined. We have to make up in our minds. We have to make up in our hearts. God, I'm going to live for you, especially, hey, today is God Friday. Today is God morning. Uh, today is Good Friday. Hey, it's the end of the week, and God has kept us. God has blessed us. And God has sustained us. And so we want to be in the posture of just giving God uh, thanks. We want to be in the posture of uh, praising God and magnifying God um, so that God will know that we know he is the one uh, that has blessed us. And so as uh, they get this um, picture together for you guys, uh, we're going to show you there's literally 10 keys uh, that should be on the side of this picture. Um, that shows everything that Adam lost. I mean, he lost so much uh, because he wasn't disciplined. So I wonder uh, what you've missed in your life if you haven't been living a disciplined life in trusting God and uh, believing God. I had to, I lost a lot. And when I realized I was out of the will of God and my sacrificial giving and bringing God his tithe and bringing a love offering and learning how to so trust and believe God, I didn't realize how much of a discipline, guys, it took to do this. Now, let's look at this uh, picture right here. On the, on the left side of the picture, you see the tree. It's prospering. It's blooming. The sky is blue. The sun is shining. The grass is green. Uh, you see all of the beautiful buildings in the background. And then, you know, it's almost like that's representing you know, the prosperity of God, the blessings of God, the increase of God. Can you imagine Adam had all this increase in his life? And then when he disobeyed God, see, there was a split in the road. And when you look on the other side of the same tree, uh, there's poverty, there's desolation. Um, the ground is not prospering. The grass is not green. Uh, the tree is not uh, producing green lives. The tree is withered on uh, one side. It's crazy. I have a tree in my front yard like that, that I have to take down now uh, because part of the tree is alive and part of the tree is dead. And so we want to make sure that we're in the will of God. So look at the smoke. The sky is not clear. That's, that smoke uh, 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 represents um, uh, uh, just how uh, dirty the air is, guys, and look at the buildings. They look like they're burnt out. It says he lost his right standing with God. 
Um, he was separated from God and God's benefits. He lost access to the Garden of Eden. He had to work by the sweat of his bra. His ground was cursed, so it didn't produce right. No matter how hard he worked, uh, he experienced spiritual and natural death. Can you imagine that? Thank you, guys. Can you imagine that? That here it is, God gives us the opportunity as breakthrough believers to give our life to him, to serve him, to honor him. And it's in our sacrificial giving. He says, I don't need blood from you because I, I already have the blood. I got the blood from my son, Jesus. I need you to align now and support, support our relationship, support and be in alignment with me by bringing me my tithe and bringing me my offering. And then when you're believing me for something, I want you to do just like I told Adam, I put seed in everything that when you sow a seed is connected to your faith, it's going to bring you a harvest. And so that's why it's so important for us to understand how God works. Now, look, I want to minister out of Psalms 23. I'm going to read Psalms chapter 23, verse one in your hearing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Are you listening to David? David is saying, because the Lord is my shepherd, because the Lord leads me, because the Lord guides me, guys, because the Lord is my coach, the Lord is my father, he's my Abba, I follow his ways. When he says he leads me, he's saying, because I know his ways, I've learned to reject my own way and to follow after his ways. Woo, come on, somebody. I want to follow the way of God. I want to follow the way of God. So this is so important. So this is what David is saying here, guys. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. You ready for this? In green pastures. He leads me by the still waters. Now, I want you to see this. Thank you, guys. I wanted you to see this in the scripture, guys, because when I showed you that picture and you saw one side of the tree that was green, that represented prosperity. Prosperity means to be whole in every area. When we behold the Lord, when we behold his majesty, when we behold his son, Christ Jesus, and his sacrifice, and we remember God, we remember God in his tithe. God, this portion is yours. He'll sanctify the rest. He'll bless the rest. Uh, and again, the tithe been since the beginning of time. After Adam, Cain, and Abel, God honored Abel, guys, because he gave the tithe and he gave the fat of his uh, sacrifice, which means he gave the best. The Bible says that Abel's offering came up as a sweet-smelling sacrifice. And Cain, his brother, became jealous because God's favor began to fall on Abel. He could see it. And so, you know the story, Cain ends up killing his brother because his blessings were greater than his. And God says to Cain, well, if you do what you see your brother do, you see your brother uh, tithing, you see your brother, your sister sacrificing in the love offering, you see them serving me, worshiping me, you see them surrendering their, their gifts at the feet of the apostles, at the feet of the altars. He says, well, all that represents me. And so I'm honoring Abel because of his sacrifice. He said, Cain, if you sacrifice like your brother, if you do well like your brother does, then the same favor will be on you because I'm not an unjust God, but I'm a just God. So people don't realize many times, guys, they get just what they have been doing. And so we don't want to be a part-time lover. We want to be a disciplined one. We want to understand there is victory, guys. There is victory in sacrificial giving, but again, there is no victory if you don't have any discipline. You have to be disciplined. You have to be consistent, consistent in your worship, consistently uh, trusting God. It was that one moment that Adam uh, allowed the enemy to get in that caused all of what he had with God, his relationship, it, all the blessings in the garden, that one bad decision and no repentance caused Adam to be kicked out of his prosperity, to be kicked out of the overflowing blessings of God. He had no wants. He had no needs. God had blessed him. And I want somebody to know, God does want to bless your needs. God wants to bless you in your wants. He said he will bless us 
with a blessing that will overtake us. And then the word of God says, he'll give you blessings. Your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, neither has entered into your heart. And he also says, these blessings, he will prepare them on a table in the face of your enemy, your enemy, the devil, those that have been listening to him that's wishing you ill, God will bless you in front of them. God will prosper you. It doesn't matter how many of them come together, touching and agreeing or talking about you or, or praying that you come down. When God is for you, when you align yourself with God, when God is for you, he's more than the world against you. So I want you to be encouraged when we look at this bad news, when we look at this pandemic, we look at this COVID-19, we look at the injustice in the streets, we look at the rioting that's happening around the world, we look at the murders and all these killings. I mean, one of the other things that really disturbed me was when I heard the news about this six-year-old boy that was murdered execution style. How horrible. I mean, who's wicked enough to do something that's so wicked that you would take a child's life, execute uh, that child? Well, they're going to they're going to reap what they sow. They're going to reap on this side, and they're going to reap in eternity um, if they don't get it right with God. See, people don't understand, guys. Um, this is a diabolical world. Who can know it? Who can trust it? And that's why we praise God. We trust God, and we serve God. Again, we've been talking about guys. Victory takes discipline. This week, I'm excited. Today is going to be our last day talking about it. On this Sunday, we have a new key that we're going to talk about when it comes to victory and sacrificial giving. When we support God, Adam, a, a, a mystery with God. As long as he walked with God, man, he prospered. Abel, man, he he was disciplined. He walked with God, and God blessed him. His brother Cain didn't got jealous and killed him. Abraham always gave a tithe of everything, uh, even gave a tithe to Melchizedek of his increase. Well, all of these guys came before Moses. The law, uh, the Levitical uh, law and the Ten Commandments did not come until Moses, when Moses scribed down what God had already told uh, the first man, Adam, since the beginning of time to always bring God a tithe, honor him with the tithe so God can bless your home. Well, again, guys, it takes discipline. God is awesome. Continue to serve God. Continue to put God first. Today is Good Friday. It is time, guys, to give. It is time to sow. Go to dollar sign Clarence Langston Jr. Uh, cash app. I have to get out of here, guys. I have a doctor's appointment, so I had to get through a little earlier today. I apologize about that, but you know, we got to take care of ourselves. So I'm going to get my, my annual checkup. Be praying for me. I know all is well in Jesus' name. But this is our time of giving. This is our time of uh, sowing our seeds. Some of you um, can sow $5, $10, 5 is grace, uh, 10 is law. I'm sowing into this victory. Uh, you Again, go to my cash app, dollar sign, Clarence Langston Jr. Let's begin to get our offering. I love offering in the ground. Those of you say, hey, Apostle Langston, I support all things new. I thank you uh, for your teachings. I thank you for being with us each and every day, encouraging us kicking off our day. Well, today is Good Friday, guys. Let's begin to sow that $25 uh, sacrificial seed. Let's begin uh, to sow that $50 sacrificial seed. Let's begin to sow that 120. That 120 represents 12 authority. I have victory in authority. I sow in this word. Thank you, God, for giving me the grace of discipline. I have victory through my discipline. So begin to sow now. Even giving, guys, like I was saying, it takes a discipline. Thank you. I see you guys um, that are sowing. Begin to get that seed in the ground. If you're sowing that $25 seed, uh, two covenant, five grace, say, I am covenanting uh, with this word. I'm covenant with the man of God, uh, the word that was just released. Father God, I'm standing on this word and I'm releasing my seed. Always remember, guys, since the earth remains, the Bible says that God said there will always be seed time and harvest time. They're not the same time, and that's why it takes a discipline uh, to give. When we are giving, uh, we have to take the posture of knowing that it is God who blesses us and God who sustains us. It is God who keeps us. And so Luke 6.38 says, guys, when we give, it shall be given back to us. And so our discipline is we have to know that God is going to do more with our sacrifice 
than we could ever do ourselves. So let's start sowing, guys. Get that seed in the ground now. Begin to release. Whatever you're sowing, $20, $100, $500, sow your seed. Get it in the ground. God is ministering um, to you all about your sowing right now, about your giving. Get that seed in the ground. Let God know, God, I trust you. God, I walk by faith and not by sight. And so when we release our seed, when we begin to give, when we begin to show God, God, it's not my check that sustains me. It's not my mind that sustains me. It's not my body. It's not my career. It's not my check, but it's you, God. And God, I receive this word. I honor this word and I sow into it. I want you to tell you there's going to be a return. It always is. I live this. I live by faith. I walk by faith. And I haven't always been where I am, but I've learned to trust God. And every time the word is ministered, I make sure that I sow. I make sure that I release a seed and I get that seed in the ground so that God can do what only he can do. Well, I love you guys. Continue to sow. Continue to get your seed in the ground. Love you with the love of the Lord. Continue to be blessed. Be encouraged. Your best days, guys, are right in front of you. God is turning all things in your favor. Walk by faith. Victory is in the discipline that we take when it comes to the things of God. Begin to sow. Begin to get that seed in the ground. Whatever you're doing, even after I go off, be disciplined today. Begin to sow. Sow that $25 seed. Sow that $50 seed. $120, 100 10 5 Whatever you have, sow it sacrificially and connect to this word. I sense God's going to do something amazing today. Well, I love you. We're going to go out with our song, All Things New. Continue to sow. Get your seed in the ground. I love you. Be blessed because God has already done it. He's already on the throne and he's in charge. Trust him and watch and see what he's going to do. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Well, something must have happened with the video. Shalom. I love you guys. After this video goes off, we will be finished for today. spirit of expectation that God is going to do something over and above. And that's why I'm always uh, making sure that I get my tithe in the ground. I'm always making sure that I'm sowing because I expect a harvest. I can't expect something from nothing. And that's what a lot of people don't know. I hate when people teach people that because people go to church for many years and they are broke and broke down. They don't have jobs. They don't have anything working together for them because they don't know God is waiting for them reconnect to God, recommit to God. And I'm telling you, God's going to bless you. Get the seed in the ground. Those of you who are sowing the $25, it's at least 20 of you. Come on, guys. It's Good Friday. It's God Friday. Uh, release that seed so God can release that harvest. Sow that $25 seed, $50, the $120, whatever you're going to give. In Jesus' name, I love you. Shalom. Be blessed.